Hi everybody, Kevin from OnWaves Design here, and today I'm going to show you how to build a link tree using the Beaver Builder Page Builder. So the very first thing that we're going to do once we sign in to our WordPress account, we're going to go over to Pages in the left hand menu, and we're going to Add New. Once our page loads and we have our new blank page, we're going to give it a title. I'm going to call this My Links. Now when we make this page we don't want to have a header or a footer so to do that I'm going to go over to the right hand side where it says page attributes and where it says default template I'm going to click on no header slash footer now that I've done that I'm going to go over to where we have these two tabs text editor and beaver builder the default is the text editor but we want to use the Beaver Builder. So I'm going to click on that. And once I click on this, it's going to automatically bring me to the front end where we'll be using the Beaver Builder plugin. The Beaver Builder plugin is an outstanding plugin that is a drag and drop system and it's actually rated one of the best drag and drop add ons for WordPress. So when I click on that, I had to click on it twice, but you might see this little blue button here that says Launch Beaver Builder. There we go. Now we're on the front end and we're using the Beaver Builder Page Builder. So you'll see here that we have all these different modules. These modules are drag and drop and it is what's going to help us build our page out. If you need to hide this, you can hit this X that then turns into a plus so you can see your whole page and then when you want to open it up again just hit the plus and it turns into an X. Here you can add different modules. You could add rows and columns. You can work from templates. If you save templates you can open them here. If you just want pre-made templates you can find them here. Depending on which add-ons you have for Beaver Builder, you have a variety of different modules. For now, we're just going to use the standard modules. So to begin with, we're going to want to add a picture. So we're going to take this photo module and we're going to drag it right there. Now as soon as you drag the photo onto the page, you get prompted with this photo box. This is how you're going to decide what photo is going to be used there. So you have the option of a media library or using a URL. I'm going to use the media library. I'm going to select a photo. And now if I want to upload a photo, I can do that by clicking on the Upload Files tab and select a photo from my computer. Or I can use a photo that I've already uploaded into my media library. I think that's what I'll do. So to make this quicker, because I have a ton of photos in here, I'm going to search for the logo. So you'll see that my photo is now showing up in real time. You can allow captions if you want on hover or below the photo, or you can add a link. I'm just going to leave it blank for now because I don't think any of that's necessary. I'm going to save. And when you hit save, the photo turns really light, that's the Beaver Builder saving the content. Once the color comes back into it, you know that it has been saved successfully. 
Now when you're doing this, you're probably going to want to put a picture of yourself, but I'm just working with what I got right now. Now you're going to want to put text underneath your photo. That's going to be your Instagram handle. So you can use the text editor and again just drag it right underneath the photo. I'm going to put my Instagram handle here. And you'll see that it's right now it's justified left. I can highlight this and hit the center and now it's underneath my photo. If I want to change the size of the text, I click on this little keyboard here. And now I have the different options of making my text as big as I want. If you want there to be less space between the photo and the text, you can go up here to advanced and you can change the margins. Top margin can be zero and now you see it's closer to my logo. If you want to change the font color, there are two ways. You can either A, highlight your text, change the font color by clicking on this A with the bar underneath it, or you can go over to style and change the color that way. If you want to change the font, you can click on the typography panel and this gives you standard fonts as well as all of the Google fonts. So if you want this to be something fun and crazy and you know a little bit about Google fonts, then you can have at it. If you want to just be you want to just guess you can do that too. You can change the weight depending on the font. This one only has normal. Again, you can change the font size here. The line height, if you were to have multiple sentences here, the line height would be the space between each sentence. And then you can align it. Style and spacing. This would be the spacing between each of the letters. You can transform this to be all caps, capital and lowercase, all lowercase. You can add decorations to it, underline, overline. Probably would never want to do that, but you could if you wanted. And then normal, italic, or oblique. And then of course, small caps if you want to do that, which looks awful in that font. Anyways, you can give the text a shadow if you'd like. Could assign a color first. Once you have your text and its desired design, then you can save. Any other information that you want to be that you want to put here, you can use the text editor and drag and place it above, below, anywhere you want. As long as you see this blue bar, that's where you know that the editor is going to be dropped. So if you wanted to add some more bio information right here, you could. I am not going to. Okay, so now to build the tree. Simple enough, we're going to go down to button. We're going to drag the button underneath our handle. We're going to call this button Facebook. If you want to give it an icon, you can.
You can decide if you want the icon position before the text or after the text. I think I like it before. You can give the icon a little bit of animation, so it's a fade in on hover. You're going to want to link your button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my Facebook page. I'm going to copy the link. And I'm going to add the link right there where it says link. Style of the button. Right now the width is at auto, but I want to add full width. Because most users are on mobile phone, you want this to be full width. The padding is going to be the space between the words and the button. So if you see as I'm scrubbing this, the top where it says Facebook is getting further away from the top of the button. That's what that padding is. If you click this little link value right here, it makes it so it's the same all around. You can change the text color by clicking this text color picker. You just want it to be white. You can either drag this all the way there, or you can just put in FFFFFFF. You can add a text hover color. So that when someone hovers over the button, the text changes. Again, you can change the typography. You can change the style of the typography. And you can change if there's a text shadow. As we scroll down further, we're now looking at the background. This is the background color of the button. So we have this really nice blue right now, but we can do an orange or a mustard or a green, whatever you want. I like that blue, honestly. We'll do that. Again, we can change the hover color. So when you hover over the button, not only will the text color change, but the button color will change. So right now we have the button at a green. The text is at a green hover. You know what? I'll just we'll make it white. You can add a style to the background. If you want to have a nice gradient, which always adds a little bit of depth and fun style to the button. You can do that. Oh, I like the way that looks. You can animate the background. You can give the button a border. So let's give this a border. Do that. You can choose whether it's going to be solid, dashed, dotted, or a double line. I'm going to choose solid. You can change the width. So that's a nice thick looking line around your button. All right, that was a little much. Okay. The radius and the shadow. So the radius is going to be whether or not it's a square, has square corners or it has rounded corners. So we can go extreme so we can really see what this looks like. Do 30. Holy moly. There we go. It's a nice looking button. We can give it a drop shadow. There's really so much you can do with this.
the Beaver Builder page builder really gives you so many options to really customize your website. And with it being drag and drop, it just makes it so easy. Border hover cover color if you really want to go there. And again, in the advanced, this is uh, the spacing, the margins. Breakpoints are if you only want it to be seen on certain device sizes. Display, always. If this was something in particular to logged in users or logged out users, then that's when you would really change this. But we're going to keep it at always. You can add animation to this, so you can say fade in. You can do rubber band. Holy. <laughs> oh man, I could sit here playing with these things all day. Yeah, that one's going to make me sick. Okay. Anyways, you're here to learn how to do this, not watch me play with buttons. We're going to go with bounce in. Okay. You can change the delay and the duration. And if you wanted to add any, type, any kind of HTML and CSS, you can assign this button an ID or a class. You can also assign what kind of container element it is. But for this tutorial, that's not really something we need to worry about. So now we say save. All right, and now we're going to hover over the button. This little box will show up and we're going to click this double paper icon, which is the duplicate. Now I'm noticing this when I duplicate this, you can see the space between the buttons. If you don't want that much space between the buttons, you're going to want to click on the button again. And you're going to want to go to advanced. This is happening because our margins are a default 20 pixels all around. So we can do zero pixels all around and save that. And then you're going to have to do the same thing to the one that you just created because it's an exact copy. And now you see they're like right on top of each other. So again, you probably don't want to do that. Whoops. I meant to do 10. Maybe 5. That looks okay. Now remember on this one, because there's going to be another button that comes below it, you're probably going to want to change the bottom too. But let's just see. We'll keep it at zero for right now. All right, so I'm going to add another. And you can just go on as many links as you have to create this tree. So now I'm going to change this one to Pinterest. I'm going to replace my photo my icon rather. Let's see what comes up. Oh, there's nothing here for Pinterest. Oh, there it is. I want to change my link. And if you like the way everything else looks, you can keep it just the way it is and save or if you wanted to change the color of the button so that you have a colorful rainbow of buttons, you can do that. I'm going to save that. I'm going to add my Twitter. Oops. 
change my link right here. Change my background color. Which one should this be? Maybe purple. And so now you have a tree made of links. Now, the final thing that you're going to want to do, you can go over to the left hand, upper left hand corner where it says my links and this little guy right here, the beaver. Drill down on the arrow and you're going to want to go to responsive editing. So now this is going to give you an idea of what your page looks like on um, an iPad, a tablet, or an iPhone. So when I click on iPhone, or when I click on mobile rather, it doesn't necessarily have to be an iPhone, you can see this is what it looks like. So you can now go in here and you are now editing for mobile. So I might actually want to make this not be as close to the edge as it is. So let's say I'll do 10. 10. That looks good. All right, and I'm just gonna get rid of these other two because I don't really need them. Okay, so that looks great. You can click exit to get out of the responsive view. And now the last thing there is to do is click done. And once you click done, if you wanna come back and work on this later, you can do save draft. If you totally hate everything you did, you can hit discard. Or if you're ready to publish this, then you hit publish. All right, there we go. So now what I usually do at this point is I go back to edit page and this is going to bring me into the back end. And I do this because I want to see the URL and there it is. And now I'm going to click on this again and have it bring me back to the front end so that I could see my work. And now you see when you hover over it, there's animation. When it first came in, it bounced. And that's how you make a link tree. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the link that's up in the search bar. In this case, it's the mindfulmerchants.com forward slash my links. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna head over to Instagram I'm going to click on my profile. In this case, I'm already there, but if you were not, you just click this little guy. You'll see here that I already have a link. I'm going to edit profile and I'm going to add my new link right where it says website. This is the only place that Instagram will allow you to have a clickable link. So this is where you're going to want to put your link. Once you hit submit, your link will be clickable and anyone that looks at your profile will be directed will be able to be directed to your link tree. So I hope you found that video useful and good luck making your link trees.